Welcome to the press conference for the Summer Fight Festival taking place on the 16th of July, promoted by Goodwin Boxing in association with Michael Ballingall, who is stuck on the M3 apparently at the moment, he's not going to get here. Um, what I'm going to do is introduce everybody who's here today, and then we're going to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, just before I do that, just to highlight the, some of the highlights of the show. 19 fights starting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, including four title fights. Some very, very exciting fights. Um, we have Wadi Camacho and Danny Cousins competing for the Southern Area Cruiserweight title. We'll talk more about that later. Jack Morris takes on Kelvin Young for the Southern Area Light Heavyweight Strap. A big grudge match between Fulton Miller and John McCallum for the challenge belt at Super Middleweight. And Josh Kennedy for the challenge belt at Super Vantamweight against Christoph Rogowski. Uh, there were due to be five title fights with Justin Menzies taking out on Ryan Toms. Ryan's unfortunately injured, Justin drops for a four rounder, but we're going to talk some big news with Justin about who he's going to fight after this, which is going to be quite exciting stuff. So moving down uh, from the far end, we've got a young man from Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire, A.D. Burden. It took him a while before he could make his uh, pro debut. He's been sparring Kelvin Young in preparation for his debut uh, and he's obviously looking forward to making a big impression uh, on the 16th of July. Next to eight is uh, Darrell Church. Now, I'm delighted that Darrell has come to us. I would say we will discuss Darrell's pro career, but to say that I, I think he's had it hard would probably be an understatement and we're looking forward uh, to getting Darrell back on winning ways and with a good plan going forward because I think he's very talented and he can make a strides in the sport. Linus Philadelphia is one of Luton's stars, There's plenty coming out of the Luton area, Kate Prosper and Linus are the two at the head. Uh, Linus is uh, an exciting potential property style of boxing in my opinion and uh, we're going to talk to Darrell, uh, sorry to Linus later on. Brad Pauls, if you get hit by him, you go over, it's as simple as that. His first two opponents have, have suffered that fate in one round and two rounds respectively. Um, he's taking on a tough foreign opponent uh, in his next fight. We'll be talking to Brad uh, later on. Luke Robinson, I often say when fighters make their professional debuts that they don't normally look that good and they normally struggle and improve their one, and I think that is standard. That didn't actually happen in Luke's debut. He stopped uh, Thomas Danko in his debut. Thomas is a tough man um, with a brilliant uppercut shot. He's 24 years of age. His brother Sean has just turned over as well. He's trained by Terry Stewart alongside uh, Brad Pauls uh, in, Buck in Buckhurst Hill, and he takes on a tough Hungarian. Neil Parry, 3-0 from Kent, known as the Vampire, a very, very much improving young pro. Uh, he takes on Dwayne Sheldon, and once again, he's trained by Terry Stewart. Uh, so Terry's going to have a very, very busy night. On my right hand side is the Southern Area Cruiserweight Champion Wadi Camacho, former prize fighter champion, former English title challenger. He's made great improvement over the last six months. He will fight anyone um, and he's taken on Danny Cousins on my left hand side. If all boxers were like Danny Cousins, the boxing world would be a much better place. Danny will fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. He's a brave man, he punches hard, he comes here with a, a, big, with a, a good chance, and this is not a one-way fight, as many people may presume. Danny is very, very, a very hard man, he's very talented, and uh, it's going to be a fantastic top of the bill. Next to Danny is Dalton Miller, who's fighting John McCallum uh, for, the, for the challenge belt. Uh, Dalton was telling me about a very interesting conversation he had this afternoon. Leon McKenzie who fought John McCullough previously, rang up Dalton to give him his best wishes plus more. Um, so uh, I think there's a little bit of a needle match with Dalton and John, and uh, Leon's obviously uh, siding there with Dalton. Justin Menzi, I was talking about uh, Danny. Justin Menzi also, a man that will fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. And some exciting news to discuss with Justin uh, here. He was due to fight Ryan Toms, but Ryan's unfortunately injured. Justin's having to make do with a four round warm up fight, but he's got an even more tasty fight coming in September, um, and we'll talk about that shortly. Sam Stokes, you would, if you talk to him, you wouldn't think he's a boxer, he seems to be too nice to be one, but he's a master 6 and 0 record. He's very talented out of the RJ's gym, um, where Justin also comes from, and uh, Sam has his seventh pro fight. I'm sure that within the next 12 months, Sam will be knocking on the door for major titles. 
Next to Sam, Adrian Martin. He's had a very, very successful start to his pro career. Comes from Essex. Uh, he's trained by Joe Taylor and he's a super welterweight. He's been on the Goodwin Boxing Show already and uh, Adrian has his third fight uh, on the show. We're delighted to welcome Chris Dossianu, who's making his debut on the show, managed by Richard Clark. Um, Christos had a very, very good amateur record and fought with some of the, some good fighters. And we'll be talking to Chris about that very shortly. I think we've got Rod next to him. Yeah. See. And at the end, we've got Rod Julian, who trains out of the RJ's gym in Chingford. It is without doubt, alongside Barry O'Connell in Hammersmith, the two most expanding gyms in London. They really are growing fast. Rod's becoming a very respected trainer. Fighters are flocking to him. Um, and the gym, he's moved to a new gym recently, we'll talk about that, but he offers great facilities and uh, the boxers get a great deal out of that gym, so that's brilliant. So let's start off, um, I'll start off with AD if you can come across here, we'll just have a little chat about the pro day. So AD, how's it feel having the debut at your court? It's a great venue, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. It's finally to get in the ring and actually have my debut after the last one in December and then in March. So tell us about who's training you and uh, how the training has gone. Uh, I trained in Vista with Daza Asha. Training's gone good. I've been sparring Kelvin Young. He's like the Southern Area type in the same field. And yeah, it's just been pushing me and pushing me. And your, what's your boxing style? How, how, what do people expect from you on the night? Just the assignment. I like to get in and have a little bit of a tear up. Even on your debut? <laughs> yeah, if I have to. <laughs> um, so, what are your sort of, how many times are you expecting to fight this year? Is it, I mean, obviously, when you're making your debut, it's, it's a case of nurturing and going through the paces, but is it something where you expect to fight sort of quite regularly or are you happy to build up slowly? Well, when this fight's done, I'm going to take a bit of a break because so I've got a baby coming in August and then. We we'll just go from there, but hopefully be back at about October, November. And one of the other things that young pros have to start with is the pain when you're not an Olympian of selling tickets. How have you found that? Very hard. It's, it's a struggle to obviously sell them and get the money out of people because they don't want to hand it over. And, you know, it's a bit of a pain, but it's something you have to do. And how much do you know about your, your opponent for the um, Thomas Danko? Have you seen anything of him? Have you watched him? No, I don't know anything about it. I've not tried to leave that down to my trainer. If you want to have a chat, have a chat with Luke. He fought him last time. So. <laughs> Luke knows plenty about him to get some tips off him. Well, cheers, AD. Good luck um, on your debut. So, uh, look forward to seeing you on the 16th. So, if you can change places with Daryl and uh, chat with Daryl. So it's exciting times now, it's a brand new start to your career. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we discussed this when you came to see me, that not many people on, on the first three fights fight the people that you fought. I mean, you fought um, Angelo Crow, Mitch Mitchell, in your first three fights, and they're, they're tough asks. Um, just tell everybody how the career's gone so far and uh, what, what's actually how it's gone. Yeah, well, it was, uh, I went pro two years ago, um, had a bit of a struggle to start. Well, it started off, I was 2-0, um, it was all going well. I had a bit of time out, come back and got the loss. Uh, that sent me back a bit and then come back and got the draw um, a few months ago. Um, so now I'm just looking back for winning ways, really. Um, just, just looking to get back to winning ways, yeah. Do you feel, do you feel like reinvigorated? Do you feel you've got a new style? You've got Mark Massau on your corner, haven't you? And um, like coming along and joining the Goodwin setup, does it just feel that you're going to get started and move a little bit faster now? Yeah, hundred percent. It just feels that I've got that boost now. I, I went a little bit stale, um, and when that happens, I just, I just weren't good in the gym, and um, yeah, just, just feel good now. Yeah. But tell, I know, tell everybody about, no matter where it was, but tell everybody about your last fight and what actually happened. This is where professional boxing lets itself down. Just talk about your last fight and what actually happened. Oh, it was just a nightmare. I, I was in here, it was about quarter past twelve. Um, 
I came out to fight the last on. Uh, they were sweeping up around the uh, ring as I was fighting. All the lights come on as I walked out, and yeah, there's no one here. Just, just felt awful, yeah. And, that, and that's what professional boxing lets itself down when things like that happen. I mean, it's just not, it's not acceptable. But we're going to, we're going to put you in a good position this time to make up for that. It's going to be a packed York Hall. You're going to, the lights will be off. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully yeah. we'll. Uh, See you do your stuff, and you're fighting Georgi Valeski from yeah. Bulgaria. Yeah. Um, tough guy. Have you, have you, have you watched him? Do you know anything about him? No, I looked just at the box red, um, and that was it. I didn't, I didn't look too much into him. Mark knows. Um, you know, I, I've trained for anyone, so it um, doesn't matter who's in there. I, I've trained for. Do you feel confident and of everything? You feel confident now? Yeah, yeah, I feel so confident. Um, sharp as I've been. Um, yeah. Best I've ever been. So. And how's it been with obviously get, getting to two and zero, then a loss, a, a draw? How's your support held up? How have the people been that been following you? Have you, have you managed to? Are they still stuck by you? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. They're still behind me. Um, that, that's, that's what makes it for. Um, and they've stayed behind me and just want me to get back to winning ways. Um, it's obviously how it's been. Like the last setup, it was just a nightmare, and to come away with a draw in that setup. Um, sort of result really to be honest. Well let's hope you do well on six days. I'm looking forward to seeing you do the stuff and then we can move on to bigger things as time goes on. So thanks a lot Daniel yeah, and all the best for the six day. Linus <laughs> So for anybody that doesn't know you uh, that hasn't seen you before, there is no doubt that I mean, Terry Stewart rates you highly, and Terry Stewart isn't a bad judge. Um, your aspirations in boxing, where do you expect to be ending up in four or five years' time? Um, you know, just going for titles and stuff. You know, um, I just, I'm not trying to put my name to anything right now, just take it as it comes, take every fight as it comes, and just, um, you know, I mean, keep doing my best and keep impressing. I mean, I think there's no doubt if we turn the clock back in the UK four years, you'd probably be getting a TV contract with your amateur record from the start. But obviously, nowadays, you have to be an Olympian pretty much to get a TV contract at the start. But you know, as time goes on, we, go, we expect to develop you into a TV fighter with any luck. Um, tell everybody about your amateur career, how your pro debut went against Liam Griffiths, and what we can expect more from your second fight than the first. Um, yeah, amateur career went kind of really, really quick. Uh, I only had uh, 33 fights and uh, I only had him in a space of like three years. And next thing you know, I signed this paper with you in the office. And um, yeah, it was, it was really, really good. It was really, a um, really fun experience. And, um, what about Liam Griffiths, the first fight, and what do you expect for them? Uh, the first fight, um, what was his actual name? Sonny White. Sonny White, sorry, Sonny White, yeah. Yeah, no, no, that went really well. I really, you know, um, well, it went really well for me. I did all, went through all the rounds. I felt like I really did, um, felt like I really did well. I felt like I really, my, uh, Terry was really happy. And I just, I felt like I did everything I wanted to do that night. So it's a tough debut fight, Sonny White. He's a tough kid, isn't he? No, it wasn't a joke. He came here, he came to impress, and he, you know what I mean? He gave me a fight. He came to impress, he didn't let me just walk all over him. And you, are you looking forward to the? You looking forward to this one? Oh yeah, another another hard one, another cagey one. Yeah, do you think? Do you think you're going to? Show, I mean, you showed lots of boxing skills. You, I mean, you dominated the fight against Whiting, didn't you? I mean, you. What do you expect? A bit more? Do you think you're? Do you think there's a lot more to come on your second fight than the first? Oh yeah, I'll be I'll be, I'll be a lot more comfortable than I was in the first one. Um, it was just trying to figure out, trying to deal with all the pressures, everyone being there. You know, I mean, tickets and stuff. Just trying to try to take it all in at the same time, not to get too excited to. This one I'll be a, I'm a lot more a lot more relaxed with this one. I don't really feel the pressure as much as I did for the first one. And what advice do you give to the other lads here who are making their debut on the 16th? I mean, what 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 do you think you can pass on from your experience of making the debut? Um, just keep a cool head, really. Just don't get too excited. Just keep a cool head and just do what you've always done in the gym. Don't try and impress any. You know what I mean? Don't try and everyone screaming. You know what I mean? Knock them out. Or don't don't try and impress anyone. Just just. Do what you do and keep yourself, you know what I mean? Just box them up, keep yourself safe. That's it, so we, we work towards, we always say one of the big things we want to do is a big fight in Luton one day, don't we? We want to bring boxing back to Luton, big time boxing with yourself and Kay. Oh that's yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a dream right now, that's a dream. We could get that uh, going at Kenworth Road, that would be, 
That's a dream right now. But one day, I think it could happen. So that's what oh, we yeah. want to do. That's what we want to do. So, cheers, Linus. All the best on the 16th. Thank you very much. Cheers. Brad. Brad comes from the same trainer, Terry Stewart, as Linus. Terry Stewart's got a fantastic team in Buckhurst Hill. Um, so, Brad, it's two out of two. You've done three rounds of boxing. Yeah. How long, is this, how long is this guy going to last? Teodor Lozanov. Um, I think a little bit longer. Um, he's never been knocked out before. So, uh, there's something to gain there. But I'm not going to go looking for the knockout. I'm going to go looking to practice what I've been doing in training. It's not all about power. You've got to think about the technique. All the things Terry Stewart's been teaching me. All his knowledge. He's a wise old fox. Um, and just applying no strength, really. So, I mean, tell us about training with Terry. Is he tough? Well, they called him Terry the Torturer. And for a reason. There's no mercy. He's evil. But it's good. He does a really good job. And I think I'm very lucky to have a trainer like Terry. Um, he's very knowledgeable. He's got a lot of experience. Um, and I think I've just fallen into the right place with the right trainer. He's, uh, yeah, he's very wise. And I'm lucky to have a coach like that. So aspirations over the next 12 months, how do you see your career going over the next 12, 18 months? Uh, wind. I plan on winning. I prepare to win. Um, and just keep building myself really. Like, if you've got to do it the traditional way, and I've got to build myself up and build my profile, like you're meant to do. Um, and just keep gaining the experience as well. But eventually, I want titles. If not next year, maybe later on. But you've got to, uh, you've got to put in the work and I'm willing to do so. I mean, he's, having the power you've got, and everybody even from your amateur days told me that how hard you're here, is it actually sort of a, a curse to a certain extent that you don't get the rounds and you have to have more fights to get the experience, or is it just a thing that you want to get rid of people quickly and you're happy to do it so you can just move on? Honestly, I do like knocking people out. I think every fighter does. It is a nice feeling. But for the long run, you do need the experience. Um, and I think that's why you're getting me tougher opposition. Like this guy's never been stopped, and it's just uh, it's finding my level to be honest. Um, obviously, the first couple wasn't wasn't quite there, um, so the next few we're going to figure out whereabouts I'm at and where where I'm going to get the rounds. I mean, the thing is, what we've got to do to doing the job right, we need to increase the the type of opponent you have in terms of how strong they are, and because otherwise there's no point you're going to have one or two. If you get to this guy, it's going to have to increase further because there's no point just having one or two round wins. Is it? <coughs> It's pros and cons really because the fans love a knockout and it's exciting and it gets people talking but it is about the experience as well and I do, I do like knocking people out but at the same time I'm still learning the gym loads, I'm always improving so the opponents have to get better with me as I'm getting better as well so um, I'm not going to go looking for the knockout, it's not about that, it's about um, applying my technique and listening to Terry Stewart and all the, uh, all the smart things he's telling me. Cheers, Brad. Look forward to seeing you on 16th. Another Terry Stewart fighter is uh, Luke Robinson. Luke uh, has his next fight on the 16th after his very successful debut. So, how did you feel after your first fight? Stopping Thomas Danko was a good feat. It was probably one of the most impressive debuts I've seen. So, how did you sort of make of it and how did Terry feel about your debut? Yeah, I fought box really well, just like, always said if I'm just going to go out and relax, like look for a knockout, if it comes, it comes, and that's what happened, I caught him a nice up part. I think throughout the whole, the whole contest, really, box really nice, and just relax, I thought that was the most important thing to do on your day, you should be relaxed. So, how did it, it helps you being in the gym, you get lots of good sparring, don't you? Who have you been sparring in preparation for, for this fight? Uh, being sparring with, uh, Brad Balls and Linus, uh, us around a few months, a uh, few quite, uh, a few rounds of Jake Ball, just while him a few months ago, so that's a good round of the gym and good. So, is it, how have you found going from the first fight to the second fight? A lot, I know you've done really well, you had a lot of support on your first fight. Some boxers find on their second fight that they have a bit of a sort of a fall down support. Is, is it still maintained at the same level? Because you've got your brother turned over as well, haven't you? And, and you're in West London and there's a lot of boxing support down there. So have you found your support for this fight? Uh, yeah, tickets still went really well. I think I'm only, I think I'm only like about 10 less than I did last time. So the tickets went really well. I've done well over 100 um, supports well. Brother's going to have to get his own tickets. I'll be nicking mine. So he's going to have to get his own. 
But the good thing is, I think West London boxing is really thriving now because you've got the gym out there with Barry O'Connell and a lot of good kids out there. So I think one of the things we're going to look at doing is a show in West London because I think that would be quite good for you to be fighting locally as well. So it's something we're going to be looking at towards the end of the year. Um, which is great. And sort of how inspiring is it also to have your brother turn over as well? Because Sean's going to be fighting September time as well, isn't he? Yeah, brother's good boxing life. I've had about 50 amateur bouts. Uh, got to a couple of national finals and amps, so it's, it's good. And it's good sparring for me as well. He's going to be a middleweight, I think. Yeah. So, going to be a middleweight. That's so good sparring, so it's good, it's good to him. Got a pro as well. I asked your brother this question. I said, Who's the best? And he said, Luke. I'll ask you the same question. Who's the best? I think he's more of an all round fighter, to be honest. I think he's, he's, very, um, he's very, very clever boxer. A lot, a lot of experience as well, like top, top level, like amateur as a junior. And school going junior, so I think he's. I'll, I'll go for him. <laughs> he's going to go for him. I'll go for him. But anybody coming on the 16th, have a look at Luke because he is a potential really real star of boxing. He's going to definitely be winning titles as time comes, and I say it was one of the most impressive debuts I've seen. So cheers, Luke, and let's hope for win number two on the 16th. Neil. He's also trained by Terry Stewart, who seems to have half of the boxes here. <laughs> It's a sort of a switch over, isn't it? Because you've been your dad's been training pretty much full time up to now, hasn't it? Yeah. So let us know what's changed and where you are, where you are now he's training. Yeah, so I had my first pre pro fights when I was based, based in Canterbury. Um, I turned over, I uh, went over to Terry Stewart's gym to do some sparring, and I felt then when I'd when I done that, I'd done four or five rounds of sparring, and I, I knew I wanted to stay. Um, so I switched over to, to Terry's gym. The thing is, because I work full time, I still still training at Canterbury as well as as well as over there so I try and get there sort of at least every week which is good and then I'm learning a lot. So really you've got a situation where your dad's still playing a major part and you've got Terry as well so you've really got the best of both worlds really. Yeah most definitely I'm training because um, obviously I'm training in Canterbury I live at like stone throw away from the gym so I'm training there and then obviously travelling down to Terry and, and yeah really really learning a lot there as well which is great. So you're 3-0. Three, you're three um, why are you known as a vampire? You don't go buying people, do you? <laughs> no, not quite. It's not a pale. <laughs> I, I, I don't catch a town. I go on holiday, I have to put towels over me. That's how bad it is. So, um, yeah, that's the vampires just stuck. How, have you, have you find, how have you found the pro career so far? You've had three. This is number four. I mean, are you happy with your progress? And what are you looking to show against Wayne Sheldon on the 16th that you haven't shown so far? I think that, I think I've done well um, since I since I turned over. I mean, my pro debut. I think I boxed well, but it, w it wasn't the greatest performance for myself. I think throughout my first three fights, I've improved uh, leaps and bounds. And in my last fight, I really showed sort of what I can do. Um, in this next fight against Dwayne, it's just going to be a lot of the same, but I'm just going to be a lot more aggressive. Um, I like to stand and box, but I can fight as well. So I'm going to try and show as much as much as I can there. And would you say a realistic target, maybe in a year's time, is Southern Area titles, that sort of thing? Do you think that's realistic? I'd love to fight for Southern Area title. Um, the, my main goal at the moment is just to keep on beating, keep winning, and keep learning. Um, and then if a Southern Area title comes, then great. And we'll see. And I'll, I'll take it with both hands and I'll win it. Yeah. Cheers, Neil. So he's, he's one of Kent's finest. We've got some good fighters in Kent, and Neil is one of the best. So cheers, Neil. We'll see you on the 16th. We'll bypass Danny and Waddy till later. We'll take Dalton now. Dalton's in one of the uh, title fights, and probably the a very eagerly awaited one. <laughs> so, you've got John McCullum. We've had the head to head, and if you haven't seen that, have a watch of it on YouTube. Um, I know that um, John's sold a lot of tickets from Scotland to come down, and they all think this is an easy party night for them. What message have you got for all the Scottish people watching here who think that you're, you're getting knocked out and you're an easy fight? Well, I really we've got no message for them. At the end of the day, there's different levels. That's all I've got to say to them. And they'll see the levels next week. So you're very confident? I'm 100% I'm confident. I'm ready for this fight. I'm prepared well. The camp's gone amazing. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the fight now. Because what's interesting is when, when you came to me, you were basically, you'd, you'd sort of been a journeyman, hadn't you? And it, it's sort of in a situation where you're, you're too talented, really, to be a journeyman. And so what you've now got is a big fight that gives you the opportunity of turning your career around and restarting, isn't it? I mean, and I'm speaking to Roger Trainer, we'll talk, to, talk about all of you later, that 
this is the best preparation you've ever had for a fight in your life, isn't it? Yeah, I've been, I've been training really well. Um, rugby put me through my paces, and as you said, um, you know, I wasn't really training as I should in the past. Now I've had that chance to turn it around. You know, I'm grateful, and I just want to go out there and show what I'm made of. And what message did Leon give you today when he gave you a call? <laughs> he just got, he just said, go out there and put it to him, basically. That's it, really. And does Leon think you're going to win? Yeah, yeah, he's calling me. He's in my corner. He just said, just throw me with that result. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, it's a great fight, and John McAdams, are t you know, to be fair to him, he's coming all the way to London to take on you, Dalton, so full, fair, fair credit for him to coming down in, into the Lions Den and fighting you, so I think it's going to be an amazing fight, and uh, for those of you that uh, haven't seen the head-to-head, -head, watch it, because there's going to be sparks flying on the 16th for sure, isn't there? It's going to be, it's going to be an exciting fight, and um, I'm glad he's bringing a lot of fans, because the more fans, the better. I get my name out there, he gets beaten up, so, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all good for me. Cheers, Donaldson. Thanks a lot. And uh, also trained by RJ and Rob Jr. is uh, the genie, Justin Menzi. Delighted to have him back on the show again. Now, Justin's had, if you don't know the story, we'll talk about it in a minute, two years out of the ring. Uh, unfortunately, he got himself in a little bit of an altercation, but that's all finished with now, and we're back on it. Uh, he want, Justin is one of these guys that will fight anybody. We originally were going to fight Ryan Thomas, former Southern Area champion. People thought, this is crazy, what's Justin Menzies doing fighting Ryan Thompson, two and old novice? But he wasn't perturbed, he put his name forward, on his two years out he was going to fight Ryan. Unfortunately, at the start of this week, Ryan's injured, he's a proper fighting man, Ryan, but unfortunately he had to pull out. Um, so Justin, for this fight, is having to have a four rounder, which may not be a bad thing, but within about 24 hours of um, these Brian Thompson pulling out, we managed to get a big fight for Justin in September, an even harder fight. Um, and when I made this fight um, with the opponent we're going to talk about, the message that I got was, are you sure your guy is going to get seriously hurt? That came from somebody, from somebody down there on Twitter. Um, he's going to take on, in September, the former Commonwealth champion, Bradley Price, who's on a run of two wins. He's fought Billy Joe Saunders, people like that. Chris Eubank Jr. and uh, Justin Menzi, who hopefully will be 3-0, is going to take on Bradley Price in September. I mean, how excited are you about that? Oh, look at my face. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, I've got a... Uh, I'm playing catch-up. Two years out of the game. I've still been training. been training hard. I've never left the gym. Hunger's grown. Um, my goals is... I mean, I'm, I'm just really excited. I can't wait. I hope the fight does happen. Um, more than confident in my uh, my ability and what I can do inside the boxing ring. Um, a lot of people will say it's crazy because I've only had two pro fights. Um, but if you know yourself and believe in yourself, which I do in abundance, and it's not arrogance, it's confidence. I'm confident. Um, so I, I, I'm just not wasting no time. You know, I'm 33 years old now, so uh, I'm not wasting no time. So if that's the fight that I can have, I'm gonna grab it with both hands. And uh, if him and the, you know his camp, they, they they think I might be crazy to fight him, then he'll find out in the night. It's as simple as that. That's an amazing. It's amazing. I don't know many two and three and people that would take on a fight like that. But with full credit to you for doing that. So obviously, I think it might be a blessing in disguise because you've been out for two years. It'd be quite handy if you to have this fight on the 16th because that will just hopefully shake care of the ring rust. Um, what, what do you expect people to see from you on the 16th? Because I'm really excited to see you back in the ring again. Um, on the 16th, I just, all I want to do is uh, take what I do in the gym onto uh, the 16th of July. Um, when I do that, once I do that, Everybody will see what I'm all about. Um, I really believe, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to show the people that something they've never seen in boxing. Um, but I, you know, the way the way I move inside the ring is, uh, I mean, I, 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 I surprise myself sometimes, and it's just, you know, just just doing what comes to you, doing what comes to you naturally when you're in the ring, and you, you know, you're learning your craft, and sometimes, you know, I do things and I, I'm just like. I, you know, how did I do that sort of thing? I just, I just love the sport, and 
like I said, uh, got so much power, heavy handed, um, and I just don't, I don't believe that there's a lot of people in my way that can that can handle me. It's a serious. Even more dangerous, more lethal than you were before. Do you not think so? Those two years is going to add to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I felt really sorry for Ryan Thomas. Um, two years out of the game, having my the guys in the gym watching them move on, having more fights, and I'm staying stagnant due to my own uh, mistakes, which I've learned from. But it's been really hard. Obviously, training with them, still sparring with them, but they're progressing, and I'm not going anywhere. But still believing my time's going to come, and you know, always training, knowing that my time is going to come. And now it's come. I've got my license back. But there's been lots of ups and downs. It hasn't been hard to stay training because of my goals in boxing. It's as simple as that. But there's been ups and downs. You know, uh, my auntie passed away a couple of weeks ago uh, from cancer. And all these things is only fueling me for the next opponent. Um, and I've got a lot, a lot held inside. And I'm glad come fight night I'll be able to release that. Um, definitely be able to release it. So it's going to be a good, I'm just going to relax and enjoy it. And I've got to say that we're really proud, all of us at the Goodwin team, myself, Olivia, Kevin and Josh, to be able to help Justin reach his goals and provide him with such an opportunity because we've seen how he's struggled in the last two years and it's great to see him smiling again. So cheers Justin and look forward to the 16th. Nice. Mr Stokes. So, we're 6-0. Oh. We've been to Latvia this year. We've had a knockout win over there. Um, now we're fight number seven. Um, we're now moving towards the stage where we're going to have to step up the rounds and titles and everything like that. It's very recent that you've moved to RJ's gym, previously trained by Ross Walgrove. You, you, you seem to be very fit now, very focused. But what can we expect to see on the 16th? Pretty much what I've been uh, carrying on with, as you said, keeping the undefeated record and keep winning and uh, moving forward, really. I mean, we're taking on Daniel Borisov, who has mixed at quite a high level. He's fought Frank Buglioni, uh, he's fought Adam Etches. So he has fought some top guys. We're not taking a guy from abroad now who's just fought David Thompson, one of those. He's mixed with the, he's mixed with the best. Um, he's, done, he's scared of nobody. So for me, this is the hardest fight you've had so far in your career. It's a slight step up for you. Um, our original opponent was, you know, pulled out, so we, we managed to get this guy in. But um, I think that we're getting to the stage now where I think we're, we're going to, you should hopefully be able to show a really good performance because if you handle this guy well, we should show we're, up, we're ready to move up another level, do you know what I think? Yeah, million percent, million percent. I've uh, seen a bit of him on YouTube and I can't wait to show like, what I've been doing with Rod and Narjo's and like, what I've been doing with sparring. And, you know, what I just want to, I just want to put that into the ring now because uh, I haven't been in the last few contests. Know, what I can do in sparring, so I, I, I want to show people what I can really do, you know, not just what I do on, in sparring, you know. I mean, the thing we always talk about, you, you do, some boxers do, you suffer from a little bit of nerves on fight night, don't you? And there is no doubt that it has in the past impacted on you being able to show what you do in the gym, but we're hopefully working on that with Rod and everything like that. Um, people don't realise what a boxer goes through on the fight day, isn't it? It's a lot of emotion and I mean, you know, tell people about how it, how it feels on the fight day when you're doing it. Yeah, with me, like, nerves play a big part in everything. It, it helps me perform as well, but like, since this last fight, it's, um, I've managed to control it more and uh, fight with it, you know. So it's been a lot better now, a lot better since I've been in the new camp. Yeah, so it's really helped you. Yeah, totally, totally. We'll talk to Rod about that in a, in a minute. So cheers, Sam. Good luck on the 16th. Adrian, Mr. A Star Martin. Never sure of a few words. He does like it. Though. Um, so, so, Joe, you've been with Joe Tate all your career. He's yeah. good training, looks after you. Um, you had a, we had a, remember the start of the career was, was difficult. You, we had the problems with the board, didn't we? So, I know we've not gone through that too much lately, but explain what delayed you at the start of your professional career. Well, uh, well basically, um, I suffer from ADHD and have done since I was a kid. 
Uh, obviously disclosing it in my medical, uh, the board had picked up on it and um, I think it was like two weeks before my debut I was uh, was told that my licence wouldn't get passed unless I uh, went and got a psychiatric evaluation, which came back fine, I'm alright, I'm not crazy, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying uh, No, it came back and um, and then uh, managed to get my licence approved, I think it's like six days before uh, my fight was uh, rescheduled and uh, Thank God for, for my following and everyone, uh, everyone being so supportive of everything going on. Managed to get the tickets out and, uh, and get out there, but it was a lot of running about I had to do, uh, to do beforehand. But, you know, it, it all added to my determination on the night. Still, out of, out of my two fights, my debut, I think, was, uh, was the best one. You know, I, I fought a tougher opponent, I believe, and, uh, and, and I've performed really well. I was punching in, in stages. I, Maybe lacked a bit of head movement, but it was it was a good 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 show, and it took a Commonwealth gold medalist to stop him. So, yeah. you know, the, the geezer was tough. So moving forward, we're only at the fight two, so there's there's plenty of learning to, to go to go through. Um, you fight Hodge in the Gill on Saturday week. Um, Hodge is very very tough. That's one thing about him. He, he doesn't go over. Um, how's it been going? What have you been working on? Uh, what are we expecting to see? Well, I'm trying to be a uh, better all round, you know, working on uh, throwing more punches, um, keeping boxing behind my jab, as, as I always have done, and uh, keeping the head movement, but, you know, off of the jab, coming back with, with a series of shots and, uh, and, and making sure the head's always moving, making myself a, a very elusive target. I've got a tough come forward opponent coming at me, you know, he, he doesn't get stopped. Watched him against Ben Hall, and, you know, he he really took some big punches off of Ben and, uh, and, and did, didn't seem too phased by it. Um, it took uh, a huge punch in Joe and to, to take him out of there, and even then he didn't hit the floor, so I'm just looking to, to you know, get through the rounds as classy as possible and, and really put on a good display of boxing ability and boxing skills. And Adrian's definitely um, a very vastly improving fighter, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Adrian on the 16th. Cheers Adrian, thanks a lot. Christos. We're going to talk about Christos' amateur career. Um, Christos is managed by Richard Clark, and I'm delighted to say he signed a promotional deal with us. Um, when I heard the resume of your amateur career and who you fought, I thought Richard's made a good sign in here. <laughs> Tell us about, tell us about who you fought in the amateur days, because there's some good names on there. Yeah, there's some good names on there, but it was a really long while ago, so I don't want to too much on it. I boxed, uh, I boxed Sean McComb, I think it's like ranked like number nine, or he's in the top 15 in the world. I boxed BP Carl three times, beat him three times. I boxed Reese Malotti, I beat Reese Malotti, I beat a lot of good names. Lost a few names as well, but yeah, I beat James Allen twice, ABA champion. So yeah. Box a lot of good people. So, do you, how do you think the transition is going to be from the amateurs over to the pros? Who's training you? Tell us about your training regime and uh, what you're expecting on the night. Well, I'm a little while at the um, at boxing, so um, it give me time to work on my craft and like, work on things. I'm trained by Richard Sawyer over there in the crowd, and yeah, we just, we train like lunatic, so I, I have no doubt I'm going to release this. So you've seen the setup of your call that we, that we do with the big entrances and stuff like that. How exciting is it that you're going to be coming out to the, 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 the big showbiz type entrances rather than just walking down the side? I mean, it's, it's a great experience to come out to something like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great experience. And to be fair, I've come to the York all the other week. I was at a show, I didn't say what show it was. But um, what, looking at your setup from one of the videos, you see it's really, really impressive. And you're just really looking so forward to it getting in that ring and doing the business. It is different, isn't it, when it's like that, though? Yeah, it is. I think if you're a professional fighter, you should come in like a professional fighter, not just walk out of the curtain, you know? I think it should be something special, especially when it's your debut. All your friends and family, you want to look apart, don't you? So I think that also, one of the things that we've, we've done that for is we, and it has proved to be the case, that a lot of boxers, when you get that sort of set up, it does, they come, people come the first time and they think, wow, this is fantastic, and then you're more likely to retain people coming because they think of it as more an event and that's what I think is happening with doing it like this and 
we have seen a lot of boxes that, you know, coming out the curtain thing, people do think, what's this all about? It just, you may as well be on a license show sometimes, to be fair. Um, so that's what we've done, and hopefully that you, you're going to enjoy it. Um, so what do you know about your opponent, apart from the fact you probably can't pronounce it? Well, apart from not being able to pronounce my own name, I can't pronounce his name either, so, um, yeah. Um, no, I don't know too much about him, to be fair. I know he's coming from Latvia. Um, he's, if he comes to stand off me, I'll outbox him. If he comes to avoid me, I'll still outbox him. So it's not going to make a bit of difference. Really. I mean, the thing about um, Latvia is sometimes people take, they sort of have a go about this guy's been to France and took on a French pros good French prospect and gone the distance with it, wasn't stopped. So he, he's, very, he's known to be very tough. So, you know, I don't, I don't imagine him be falling over too early. So it should be a good fight. But what do you, I mean, how's your support been? Because I know selling, we talked about before selling tickets on your day, it was hard. How have you found it? Well, where I'm from is like concrete jungle, but I've got a lot of following and people really get behind me because I'm a social person, as a lot of people know. A lot, I'm really liked by a lot of people. So um, I'm closely followed by a, a poker club. Um, I'm closely, um, closely followed by a lot of uh, local pubs as well. And just the old around the old general area. So it should never be a problem selling 100 tickets. Where do, you, where do you actually come from? Where do you live? I come from uh, a little tiny place called Woolwich. Okay. And how are the pubs? Are you emptying the pubs on a Saturday night? Are they happy with that? They usually get emptied on a Saturday night anyway, but yeah, the pubs in Woolwich, yeah, they, <laughs> they're really supportive. They're, they're, they're quite passionate where, we're, where I'm from, so yeah, I'm looking forward to um, having a good crowd with family coming and watching me as well, so yeah. Brilliant. Well, Chris, we're look, really looking forward to seeing you on the 16th. Thanks for coming tonight, and good luck. Cheers. Cheers, mate. We got RJ left. Hard. Train of stars. <laughs> you always say, judge a trainer by how he looks. Listen, I've come relaxed today. I've come relaxed. <laughs> so we've got a few fighters on the bill. Talk about let's talk about each fighter. Your views on their fight. What you're expecting. Um, so I'll hand that to you. Yeah, I mean, um, we start with Dalton Miller, obviously John McCallum, it's a good fight. Um, it's been great to train Dalton, really, twice a day, every day, eating correctly, training correctly, uh, intaking the correct amount of water, um, and just to train him. It's been a pleasure, to be fair, he's done everything, sparring, every bit of road work, track work, you name it, we've done it, and um, he'd be more than ready. You'll see about levels on the night, I think, and there's no disrespect to John McCallum, but I think you'll see it with Dortmund it is, Dortmund who really is, okay. fair. Um, Sam Stokes, probably one of my most improved fighters, I'd say. Um, he's a lovely guy, and he's just, can't get him out of the gym. Um, he's willing to learn all the time, he's really easy to train, he listens, um, he's strong. Obviously, I've had to change a lot of stuff to do with him, sitting down with his work, his strength. He's immense. I mean, he's a really strong uh, middleweight. Um, and I think you'll see the best of him on the 16th next week. Um, going to Justin. Obviously, uh, been training Justin for a long time now, over four years, straight from the amateurs, uh, from line boys. Um, we started fantastic, and then obviously we had a little hiccup uh, to keep him in the gym. Was, was tough, but, but, but at the same time, when he was there, he was still channeled in. I mean, a lot of fighters that could probably come out of the game for two years due to a suspension or whatever and, and stay hungry, especially now being at 32 years of age or 33 years of age. Um, and he's just like, he, he's such a pleasure to train. He's getting better and better and better. And I don't believe there's anyone out there pretty much to be able to deal with him. I know it's a big statement, but. I think you'll see next week what he's all about and then obviously bring him on to um, I don't like to overlook fights no matter what but I don't care who you put in front of him to be fair to you and Bradley Price it would be a great fight and I think uh, Bradley Price and Price would be silly to overlook him which would be great for us but he gets up for any fight What do you think about the people on Twitter who have said when we announced the fight you must be mad Justin's going to get hurt there was somebody from Wales what, what do you What's your view to that? Listen, if you're looking from the outside and you're looking at, if you want to look at a novice that's had literally two fights, you'd think you, you crack is going into it. Do you know what I mean? But he's not your average fighter. He's probably one of the biggest super worldwide 
punches in the country, I'd say. Honestly, he, he's a bit special. He's all wrong for everyone. He's a south poor, he's awkward. He can take a punch, he can give a punch, and he don't really care for no one. If he's got a dig, he dig. I think he's got that little bit of something in him that all fighters should have. When it when the going gets tough, I mean, just to be outside the ring and come back and be this hungry. Who, who comes back and wants to fight Ryan Thomas in eight rounds? And, and it's really not a problem. And then now you're thinking about fighting Paddy Price. He's, he's laughing. He's, he don't mind. Do you know the thing was, what people don't know is, Justin wanted to fight Bradley Price on the 16th. If Bradley Price couldn't do the waiting time, other than that, it would have been Bradley Price next week. Yeah, he would have. <laughs> I mean, 100% we would have fought Bradley Price next weekend. And he would have been ready. And that, people might say that's mad, but... I don't look at madness, I look at progression and, and, and believing in your fighter and do you know what I mean, the day, it doesn't matter. I ain't going to put a fighter into a fight to commit suicide, I'm, gonna, I'm here to train him to win titles. I believe in him, I don't care who he fights to be fair. It's just a shame Paddy Price obviously couldn't make the weight, uh, but we'll wait. And uh, obviously he was a bit down after the Ryan Thomas fight, but I said listen, just get in there, do your four rounds, you've trained for it. And let's just get this one out of the way and move on and go into an even better camp in September. Cheers, Ron. Thanks a lot. Good luck to all the three fighters there. We'll now have a look at the main event. Just jump off one. <laughs> I think this fight will be a phenomenal fight of the night. We have the Southern Area Cruiserweight Champion. Former prize fighter champion Wally Camacho taking on Danny Cousins from Portsmouth. Danny, what do you say to people that say you're the underdog and have little chance in this way? Um, I'll just say, basically, I've trained really hard. I don't really care who I fight. Um, I can punch. And I'm going to take this opportunity with both hands, basically. So, yeah. I'm really confident. Me and my team are really confident as well. So. So, yeah. What do you think? Do you think this is just routine defence of the title? Or do you think Danny poses you any problems? Just a normal routine fight, man. Um, obviously, I haven't really checked on him or nothing like that. I've just been concentrating on myself. Um, but I know I'm much levels and levels above him. But let's see what he brings on that. Do you think what he is levels above him? Well, I don't want to sit here and bad mouth him, but obviously he's been on big, big shows um, and he has boxed at a high level, but he has been beaten at that level. So, we don't know what, do you know what I mean? He's a Southern Era champion, I've got my shot, so, so we'll see, won't we? What do you, what do you, how do you envisage the fight going? Do you think it's going to be a long distance fight or do you think it's, it, it'll, it'll be something that's uh, going to be finish early? To be honest, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to go in there a round at a time um, and just just share one round at a time. In your view, what do you think this is a long distance fight? Is this something? I mean, you, I think the, the issue with Danny will say that you've been beaten at that level. I think that there is no doubt you're different. You're fighting in a different way now, aren't you? So, I mean, talk about what you believe has changed and why you're a better fighter now than you were in some of those defeats from Kennedy and people like that. I just think, uh, you know, my, the way I think, the way I box now is just completely more different. Um, I take my time now. Uh, don't need to rush certain certain things and just keep it very basic. You know, it's basic. That's what that's what wins the fight easy, and that's what that's what I showed on the on the night when I beat Danny Cousins. But, um, that would get bloody up. But um, yeah, really truly with me, it's all about, you know, I've grown from level to level, you know, I've been sparring with some great champions and I know what level I am now and I know as long as I'm nice and concentrated, like, I'm nice and focused, you know, I know I can uh, just, just basically just win the fight and move on to the next one. You say you know what level you are now, what level is that? Obviously I'm past up an area. Um, level, but um, it's one thing. Obviously, you know, I know I had to. I know I've been on big shows and I had to restart all over again. You know, and now obviously start with the southern area. I'm going to defend it and then move on to the English. But um, 
as what happens in a fight, you know, is all down to what my man wants to do in the ring, really, in the first round, you know. Um, I'll, I'll play whatever he brings, you know, I'll just, I'll put him in the limits. Do you think it'll be, do you think, you obviously think you'll win? Do you think it'll go the distance, or do you think it'll be an early night for you? Because Danny's tough, and he's got a, he's got a very solid chin, that's for sure. Obviously, like, you know, I don't want to be rude to the man, right? but I know he's going to get knocked out. It's down to him if he's going to, if he wants to fight. If he wants to fight, then obviously he'll get knocked out early, but if he wants to box, he'll be more later on. But I know he's, he's definitely going to get knocked out, like, 100%. You see, you don't agree with that, do you? No, not one bit, to be honest. Um, I've only been stopped once in my pro career. Um, that was at Cruiserweight for that same title against Leon Williams. He went on to win, obviously, the British title. Um, but back then, I was, I was younger. I was a light heavyweight, where now, obviously, I've got older and matured into, a, obviously, a Cruiserweight now. Um, and like you say, I've got a decent chin. Um, and I don't know, he's forgetting. I, I can punch myself, do you know what I mean? If he comes in, leaves himself open, it could be good night, do you know what I mean? So, we'll see, won't we? I think one thing's for sure it's going to be a, be a great fight. I do actually believe this could be one of the great York Hall classics. I think it's a fantastic fight. Um, English title. You know what, can I just say something? You, know, you might have a good chin, but it's not all about the chin. You know what I mean? It's like you can get hurt in all different type of areas. You know, you've got your whole body, your shoulders. I'm not punching your shoulder. You might hurt your shoulder. But, you know, it's one of the things. No, no, believe me. Listen, I'm trying not to keep it nice and humble, like, but deep down, like, you, you will get hurt. <laughs> like, obviously, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that obviously you took this fight. And, um, but I'm moving on to the next level, and it's obviously, I have to have, I have, to have uh, a defence. But, you know, it's going to be fun now. You've got to give, you, you must give Danny respect because a lot of people don't want to fight you. So, at that level. So, you've got to give Danny full respect for taking the fight. He's coming to your court and he's coming to take you on. So, he's not, he's not scared of you. He's, he's stepped up to the challenge. You've got to give him full respect for that. Yeah, yeah most definitely. You know, um, at the same time as all, well, a lot of people probably want to fight me because of what's happened before in the previous fights and this and that. But it is what it is. I mean, it's like I'm very grateful that he's obviously taking this fight. And have a defence and move on, but it will be like a crazy night. So you've you've got quite a lot of support coming down for Portsmouth. You're telling me today. It's uh, I mean people coming. I know the ticket sale is hard, isn't it? I mean we spoke about it all before, but you've got a fair few people coming down, haven't you? Yeah, I've got quite a few people coming up because obviously it's an exciting fight. Um, top of the bill at York Hall again. I think this is the third time top of the bill. Um, also here in fights as well. So, um, so yeah, a lot of people are excited. Obviously, they know Woody Camacho is as well because obviously he's with um, Match Room and that before. So, obviously, yeah, everyone's excited. So they want to come and watch. And obviously, me and my team are confident. So yeah. And all, we've also seen um, that uh, just going off the Woody thing for a minute. Um, yeah. That uh, you've been called out by by who record the kudos. So it looks like. <laughs> Um, but it looks like whatever happens, you've got to fight with uh, Byron and Portsmouth in October as well. You, it could be the big Portsmouth showdown. Body knows plenty about Byron, I don't so. Um, so how, I mean, you saw that in the paper, didn't you, at the weekend or whatever? Yeah, basically, I called him out on Facebook a while ago. It must have been a couple of months because I was didn't know what was happening, what fights. We had a couple of opponents not wanting to fight me. Um, so obviously I tried making my own fight with... Well, I lost a big fight in Portsmouth. For some reason, it didn't happen, but he said his team said have a rest. But then the show we wanted to box him on, next Friday, he's boxing on there anyway. So, I, I didn't, and all of a sudden it's in the paper, no one wants to box me. So, so yeah, if he wants to fight in October, then that'll be it, we'll fight. But you'll do that without? Yeah, I'll fight anyway. I'm fighting Woody, I'll fight Liam Williams, do you know what I mean? I ain't scared of Brody Kudos, not one bit. So that'd be a good fight in October as well, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Listen, you're both nice guys. May the best man win on September the, uh, sorry, July the 16th. <laughs> can we just have a, I'll keep thinking about your fight in September. <laughs> um, can we do, can we just do a head to head and shake hands and shake hands?
Thanks a lot for coming. Thanks for watching. Good night.